of the Lord. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord today? Yes. Have you shared with your neighbor anything? Whether it is the weather or the rain? Tell them something. Just tell them something like, you look good. The weather was good today. I'm going to have chapter today. Can you join me? Now, something. Just say something and it's going to be great. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I was looking for Pastor Dixon. He's going to teach that. Oh, he has taken his big eager. Wonderful. I wanted him to tell you that the tent is just across um, in a manga, which means if it is in a manga, another one day and we'll be here. Let's keep on praying for him. We'll let you know when we move that church to where it ought to be. I'm still talking about forgiveness, and today I'm saying I would not forgive. That is, <laughs> I can't forgive, I should not forgive, today I would not forgive. I don't know whether you still remember our key verse, Matthew 6, 14 and 15. Can we read it together if it is put in there? If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Verse number 15. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your father will not forgive you your sins. Remember where we are coming from? We are coming from the Lord's prayer and we said, Prayer is a hard work, but prayer works. And then we say it is battle. Everything in the Lord's prayer is battle. We battle to bring the heavens down. We battle for our daily bread. We battle for forgiveness. We battle who receives the glory when God has done the things that he has done. The first of those lessons of forgiveness, we said, I can't forgive. And we gave three reasons why I can't forgive. Number one, because I don't understand what forgiveness is and what forgiveness is not. Then secondly, I'm riding the guilty blame. I'm riding on uh, guilt and blame. See? Wonderful. You're a good student. But it appears that three quarters were not here when I taught that. And then the third thing we said, I cannot forgive because I cannot give out what I don't possess. Last, last Sunday, we gave four reasons why I should not forgive. Number one, I should not forgive because forgiveness denies the seriousness of sin. Number two, I should not forgive because forgiveness lets people off the hook. So I will not forgive because it is releasing people. Thirdly, I should not forgive because forgiveness places so much responsibility on the victim. So there is a lot on you. Therefore, I will not forgive. So that I'm not, uh, I don't have this burden of, of me. Then fourthly, we said for, forgiveness is unfair. So we concluded why you are not forgiving is because of those reasons. I hope that God is going to help us to learn to forgive. So today we are looking at I would not forgive. And I want to take you back to where we started the whole process. Because where we started, I said there was a survey that was done. And the survey that was done um, had the questions. There were four questions that people were asked. There were actually statements that were brought forth and people were asked, is it true? Is it false? Is it correct? Do you agree with it? And people responded that forgiveness and repentance, you cannot honestly forgive someone unless that person 
shows some remorse for what they have, they have done or what they did. And we say it, it is a statement. And a lot of us, because of that, we carry that along with us. And that's where we are. That forgiveness and repentance on that, we cannot honestly forgive unless that person shows some remorse for what they did. We also saw another statement that was made on forgiveness and consequences. If you really forgive someone, you would want that person to be released from the consequences of their action. That's what you would like. Number three, we also saw that on forgiveness and reconciliation, if you genuinely forgive someone, you should rebuild your relationship with that person. And we saw the reasons and so on and so forth. And f the fourth thing we saw on forgi forgiveness and forgetting, we said if you have really forgiven someone, you should be able to forget what they have done to you. And we said those are wonderful statements but the Bible does not agree with any one of them. They might be so karibu kwa ukweli, but they are not the truth. So today we want to look at those four as we try to say why I should, I won't forgive, I would not forgive. You see, I told you last Sunday that why we feel we can't forgive people is because sometimes when they tell us, forgive us, we look at their smile. If they are smiling, we say, uko serious. In other words, you are demanding them to be so serious. Uja piga magoti, piga magoti kama ni kutubu. Tubu kabisa wacha imchezo yako. Yani, the, the demand that we have on these people, if they don't do it, we say, yo ni mchezo, yo sorry yako. Where I come from, they used to say this, sorry yani nine kombechi ya mudhugu. Yani every kauro thing down, sorry, sorry. Sorry, And you know, this, this is in our family, in the home. And you, you know, you are telling your mom sorry. And you know what? Uh, she will tell you that statement. Sorry, sorry, yako. Vikombe ya mzungu yota irikuisha. Yangwa itaisha. Iyo sorry, yako. Kwa hivyo inamanisha. Sorry, yako ina tupiri wambari. And I pray that God is going to help us even as we learn to forgive. Because it is so sweet. To live with the people and you have forgiven them. It's so sweet. Oh, I wish you can understand that. So on forgiveness and repentance, I said you cannot honestly forgive someone unless that person shows some remorse for what they did. We want them to come to a level where they show it. We can see it. But you know, some of us are so blessed. They are Amos Wako or Talitwala. Those two men, bless the name of the Lord. Even when they are so serious, because Samuel learned under Talitwara, he will be so serious, but he is so smiling. Moses, uh, Amos, Wako, the same. So serious. But if you look at him, you wonder, when will you be serious? Because the guy is like everything to him. Naniviri aliumbwa, si nini. Because there are some of us, when we smile, we even make it worse. <laughs> we are a stone face. So when we try it, actually, we make it even worse. But by the way, sometimes we have to say, by the way, I'm smiling inside. It's only my outside that is like this. So people are like that. So sometimes you want to demand, you have to show this remorse. You have to really show it so that I can forgive you. But the thing is this. Now this, honestly, I cannot you, you, you say that. You cannot forgive someone unless that person shows some remorse for that. But then what about those who never ask for our forgiveness? What about those who won't even acknowledge they are in the wrong? Should they expect to receive forgiveness from us? And more importantly also, should we be required to give it? Because there are some people that will never ask. They just keep on living like everything is okay. Do you, have you ever seen somebody who is living like they never have ever done anything? And, and, and sometimes the couples, we are so guilty for that. You just behave like nothing has. Yani, life continues. 
continues. But it is always good to know life does not continue. Kama kuna mali mumekosana, life does not continue. You need to change. To, to others, can you honestly forgive someone who is unaware that he has hurt you? He is unmoved by the fact that he has offended you. He is unwilling to admit the mistake. He, in, in other words, he is unable, in other words, his repentance, the repentance here, is repentance, a requirement for granting forgiveness or to ask forgiveness because of illness or death? Is, is it a requirement? Those are questions that are profound. Because I want to forgive. Is he aware? Because I told you it is you I want you to forgive. See you yule aliye kukosea nataka akusame. We do nataka umusame. Are you getting the picture? Now, is he aware that he's wronged me? Is he aware? Because that is one thing. So we can pretend he is not aware so it doesn't exist. Lakini wewe ulali. So who has a problem? The victim has a problem. He has to learn to forgive that guy who walks like nothing has ever happened in his life. Are we to forgive? Are we to forgive? That's the question. Because the answer is we are trying to say I would not. Why? Because I don't know whether he is, he, he is remorseful. I even don't know whether he knows he hurt me. I have no idea. He behaves like everything has been all right. There are at least uh, three faulty arguments people use for demanding repentance before granting forgiveness. They are faulty. And the first faulty one is that forgiveness needs to be earned. This person must earn it. You want me to forgive you? Please work for it. Work hard for it. And then I will forgive you. Therefore, I'm the one deciding whether I should or not. So you have to work for it. Then when will I forgive you? I am the one to decide. You keep on working until I say, but I think I think now I'm here 90%. You need 10 more percent that I will forgive you. Forgiveness needs to be earned. Those who demand that their offender earn forgiveness by demonstrating sorrow are operating under some illusion that somehow their offender's repentance will be sufficient to cover the offense. So it is like you're looking how much is that so that I can forgive this man. Remember what I told you? You can be on a guilty stroke blame, see? That's the place that you are because what you're trying to do is to see whether it balances. If it balances, then I forgive the person. The words, I'm sorry, may bring momentary relief of a kind. But you see, it is so mem uh, 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 momentary. But we don't want momentary. We want it to be real. To come and permanently change me. From that guilt and heart that I have gone through. And you know, salvation is like that. We are not saved just because we told God I'm sorry. We are saved because he chose to forgive us. You are sorry. Doesn't, actually some of you say sorry and before you wake up you have sinned again. If you was to keep the count, my goodness, some of you will be getting saved every hour. But he chose to forgive us. We are forgiven because of the, uh, the grace that he has for us. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace you are saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not of works lest any man should boast. So that is faulty. To demand someone to work for their forgiveness. Number two. Another faulty argument. Before people argue this way. Before I forgive you. You have to do this. Is that forgiving and repentant person. Invites further abuse. You remember what I told you. That you can keep that behind you. So that every time somebody offends you, you pull the arsenal from behind. But you see, we are talking about if I really want to forgive, I should know that I am going to be venerable. And this is the argument. Aren't this, those who forgive their offender before he expresses any remorse, in effect wearing a kick me sign. In other words, when I forgive you and you are not even shown remorse, what I am saying, kick me again. 
You hit me here, I forgive you. Hit this other side. Remember what I told you about the Hebrews? Don't get there. It is not a very good place. Forgiving and repentant person advise further abuse. We need to forgive them. Like our father forgive, forgive us. What is being overlooked with this kind of thinking is the very nature of grace itself. Because it is a desperate, desperate or deliberate decision to give something good to someone who does not deserve it. Grace invites abuse. But God still chose to take the risk to forgive us. You know, the people who hurt God are people who have received grace for the first time. When we redo it again, when we crucify the Lord the second time, we hurt him more. Yet, he forgave us. Bless the name of the Lord. He forgave us. It's up to us whether we abuse his gift of forgiveness or not. And it is also up to, to the offender. Whether he abuses our forgiveness towards him or not. So my responsibility is not what is going to happen. You know, you sit down there and you say, Uyu ni kimsamehe. Kweri. Uyu. Nataku msamehe. Niki msamehe. Sao unajiuliza tu. Uyu ni kimsamehe. Atazaa matunda ya msamaha nilio msamehe. Kwanza unataka azae matunda. So you leave him here. Unaenda kutafuta matunda yake. Are you going to get it? Are you not going too far? Si unforgive too. Tugoje matunda. Kwa sababu matunda inatokana kwa the downside of forgiveness is that it invites further abuse. That's what people say. But the upside is that it exposes us to higher way of living. That I will forgive you regardless. I will forgive you just like I have received forgiveness from the Lord. Romans 5 and 20 B part. But where I sin abound, grace did much more abound. Chapter 6, verse 1 and 2 of Romans. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So that is faulty. Faulty in the sense forgiving and repentant person invites further abuse. It doesn't. So let's just forgive. Wacha kuamuka usiku. Eh? Na una sweat. Kwa sababu ulikuwa umemshika ulikuwa umemnyonga. Lakini unaamuka unakuta ah. Lakini ni kweni mamushika wapi? Ulimshika hapa kwa hivyo yu kulala. Umekua na shida hiyo. The third faulty thing, I told you at least there are three faulty arguments people use. The third one is forgiving and repented person is unscriptural. Actually, these are spiritual guys. They say, haya, kukataku msamea ni kiroho. It's spiritual. Iko katika maandiko, actually they might quote a few scriptures so that they can just justify themselves. This is the strongest argument that people offer demanding repentance or an apology before offering forgiveness is that the Bible seems to require it. After all, they argue, if God requires us to acknowledge our sin before he forgives us and has forgiven us, Ephesians 4, 32, then should we require an offender to repent before we forgive him? It makes some sense. It's logical, isn't it? Now, if God wanted me to say I'm a sinner here and then he forgave me, then I also want this person who has offended me, first of all, to acknowledge it. Then I might decide to forgive. This kind of thinking actually fails to note an important distinction. There is a crucial difference between receiving forgiveness and guaranteeing or granting a forgiveness. The issue of repentance is vital, important to receiving forgiveness, but to totally irrelevant to granting forgiveness. In other words, when I'm talking about forgiving someone, the issue of repentance is virtually important to receiving forgiveness, but totally irrelevant to granting forgiveness. I don't know whether you are getting the point. In other words, repentance is required for the offender but should not be required by the offended. See, I told you, why you should not forgive is because the victim has more responsibility than the person who has done it. Because the person who has done it, maybe they don't even have a clue. They behave like everything is okay. They hurt you, yes, they did, but they live like it was normal, it was usual. 
But you, the offended, you, the victim, it is you we are talking about. You cannot demand it. You can only release it. Eh? Mwambie jirani yaku, release. Don't demand it, release it. Because you are hurt. The drivers here, we learn to forgive a lot. Oh my goodness. But some of us carry that burden until home. You will wake up at night. Na utaite yu driver, jinga utakufa. And then the wife will ask you, jinga yu imetoka wapi? And then you say, ah, sini jinga inaende chagari. Because you see somebody told me, when you are dreaming and shouting, somebody can start a conversation with you. And you can think you are very good in that conversation. Kumbe ni maswali unaulizo, na unaweza tuwa sirizako zote. Ati mulikuta na ya wapi, tulukua tukinyu wa chai na ya mahalafu. Unaweza tuwa masirizako. So I pray that God is going to help us to forgive some of these people. Let them go. Release them. Because you know, kama we ni driver, kuna siku moja ume overlap. Amen. Najua kuna hapa driver na niangalia. One time you did what? Overlapped. You did a U turn in the wrong place. Halafu hapa, hauli ya thandao kwa sabu ujashikuwa na polisi. Kwa hivyo mtu wakishikuwa na mawa, Unashikwa? Unashikwa kufanya nini? Nili overlap. Eh! Hey! Over speeding na yo je? Bihisho pa shikwa? Na wewe je? Kama ujashikwa siku moja, mugu itakanyanga bila kujua. Na utasimamishwa. So you cannot stand there and you know, it's like, learn to forgive. Actually, forgiveness. You know, I, I normally look at life and I see people who have learned to forgive actually get healed very quickly and move on. Amen. You get healed very quickly and move on. Because you are not on a stone. You just forgive and move on. But there are some of us who stay there and every time you lament what happened. So remember, it, it's not required by the offended. Romans 5 verse 8 says, but God commanded his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now you see, it has canceled the other argument that I have to say I'm a sinner. No, Christ had forgiven you. All what you are doing now is to receive it. And to receive it, the key is only to say, here I am, a sinner. And you receive what he has given you many, many years ago. God offered us forgiveness before we asked for it because he was the offended party. But we must repent before we can receive forgiveness because we are the offending party. From God's viewpoint, biblical forgiveness is unconditional. It doesn't demand nothing. The best reason to forgive unconditionally is the emotional and spiritual healing it brings into our lives. I am the offended. You see, the whole truth is that I want to live a little longer than you. I don't know about you. Do you want to live a little longer than me? If you do, then learn to do the simple things of forgiving. Bwana apewe sifa. Kuna watu mutafariki hapa upesi kwa sababu ya asira na nini. Ina kunyonga mbaka inatoa tuugojwa tuigine kwa tumbo, unapata nini. Na nazima ufike pahali uwe mtu ambaya unajivunia maisha yako. Na kujivunia maisha yako ni kusema, I refuse to give my hands to someone anifunge na nyororo na aniweke kwa ki, nimekata. Kwa hivyo sita kubali na kusamhea tu. Let's learn to forgive one another. Forgiveness. The best reason to forgive actually it is just unconditional. Whether our offender repents or not is between them and God. Don't let the wrong become an issue between you and God. Weka hawa huru. Weka hawa huru. You remember what I told you about the providence of God. Some of you need that all things work together for good. So you forgive so that you can keep on going. Bless the name of the Lord. If I was Anwai Guru, I would forgive a lot of people. I'm serious. Because her healing and her focus 
will come from forgiving people what they say about her if she has not touched you know unajua kwa Mungu Mungu anajua she is blamed are you guilty if she is not guilty is just to forgive Kitel and the others and everybody and all of them and then she will get well but if she was guilty then it will not work so that's that was my feeling that she can live longer than myself if she releases herself if she doesn't atakuwa na shida 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 nyingi na sio yeye peke yake wale wote wameingia katika corruption kwa sababu siku moja corruption hapa Kenya hapa Kenya corruption hapa Kenya unajua corruption hapa Kenya siku moja itaisha unajua itamalizwa na nani Asante sana. Kuna wengine wamejua tayari. Wengine mnaniangalia tu. Corruption itaisha hapa Kenya na itamalizwa na nani? Bas, sisi tutaomba mpaka tuimalize. Lakini labda haitaisha kipindi chetu. Kipindi chetu kitakuwa kina msuko suko kidogo lakini tusimame imara and let us learn to forgive others. I I listened to a friend of mine. I had not known he had gone to that depth. Um, he, he preached to us somewhere we had gone the other Saturday and he gave a testimony of how he had gone to look at his plot because he had bought a plot somewhere and then when he went he saw there are people building in the plot so uh, because he was alone he was just looking then somebody approached him wewe mzee nini unaangalia hapa sema hapana nikupita pita tu ninapita pita tu but something told them huyo ndio mwenyewe because they were stealing so he he went to thika town and then he was having tea actually he made a lot of fun because because when we were growing one hotel we could not enter was december 12 kuingia tuingi tunaingia hiyo nyingine roa bogo roadhia nini hiyo hiyo mtu anaomba anaitia chai anapewa chai na madazi tatu hizo zile tulikuwa tukiingia hii ya order tukwa tukiingia hiyo ile chai kwanza inachemka in, uh, every now ile kiko inachemka ya turugi na maziwa ni kuchanganywa mara moja tu yani na mandazi tatu so this time of course he's a doctor he is working for the united states and he has money so he entered there to have a cup of tea he ordered the cup of tea but before he drank some people walked in and greeted him and told him muze unaonekana they told him in kikuyu nironekana nurete wega that's what they told him you seem like you have eaten very well now if you don't want mess forget that plot hata chai hiyo hakunywa but this is what he told us he forgave them <laughs> he ran for his life and you forget it sasa nikiuawa kwa sababu yako kwa plot unahanga hapo labda mnapigania na ndugu yako akikuona unaona ameweka jembe kwa kakaribu si utakatwa na jembe si afadhali umwambie ndugu kuwa ukilima yote panapo majali wa Mwenyezi Mungu <laughs> atanipatia yangu lakini wengine ni pana hii ni ya baba lazima nigawiwe mtakata na bure tu na hiyo ardhi mtaiwacha hapo kwa sababu miaka yako ni hiyo 70 ukiwa na nguvu kidogo utafikisha 8 lakini wengine hapa aite atuioni ngo kwa sababu kule ndani tunachuki na hasira na hasara na vidonda vimeanza ku Let's learn to forgive. I know we I know I know <laughs> let me say this the whole truth is there are some of you that you are really hurt. And you know the, the 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 challenge of the preacher like myself to preach to you today is because some of you I know how hard you are and yet I'm saying forgiveness you know so I I know it's it's a bit difficult but I also know once you release you are in for something greater you have to release after all kama ni mtoto uliwachwa naye hakuwekelewa mawe After all kama ni ndugu alikukataa na neti ulikuwa umenunua na keki ume yani hakwenda na moyo wako Huyo jamaa alikunyang'anya biashara kwa sababu ulikuwa umesaini na hukujua alafu akakwambia unajua hii ulisaini huku soma hapa 
Mwachie. Whether your offender repents or not, it is between them and God. The other word that we saw was forgiveness and consequence. And we said, if you really forgive someone, you would want that person to be released from their cons uh, consequences of their actions. That's what you want. That's what you feel you should. But one of the greatest barriers to forgiveness is the myth that forgiving someone automatically frees them from any consequences of their actions. Such a misunderstanding makes many people hesitant to forgive or condemns them to a lifetime of unnecessary bitterness. You know, when, when you are struggling, leo atakuwa white as snow. Hiyo ni urongo. Uyu anaitwa kemani. Na ukimsamehea bado ataitwa kemani. Na itachukua muda aweze kukuona vizuri. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. So if, when you demand nimekusamehea, sasa you know ni, 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 ile, ni ile ya uto, watoto tu ndio najua wanafanyaga hivyo. Mtoto anaanza kuambia I hate you, I hate you, I hate you. And then let's be friends. But you people here are not your walienda Sunday school. Ah, wako hapa. I know. I know. Forgiveness and consequences. What about the church treasurer who was caught embezzling money? What are you going to do? How about that accountant? What are you going to do? If he publicly confesses and pays back the money, then should the church restore him to his position if he have really forgiven him? Now that is the question. Uyu ameiba tumemkamata. Akirudisha, anaweza rudishiwa kazi yake. Hiyo uliza Kenya government. Uliza Kenya government. Kwa sababu hata wale watawekwa uhuru na koti. Kurudishiwa kazi na kuwaga ngumu. Because we have a backlog of what has happened. And the church is the same. Ndugu amepatikana, amefanya dhambi ya uzinzi, ametubu, amesimambere ya wandugu, lakini hakuna watu anataka kumpatia ushirika. Tunasema, hey, amesamewa na mungu. No, oyo, doge motika na ile etu. Oyo. Oyo. Ameokoka ye, lakini ni kukoka ile nusu kidogo. Sio ile. Forgiveness and consequences. What about the husband who had an affair and broke up his marriage? If his wife has really forgiven him, shouldn't she quit making him pay for his mistakes over and over again by demanding even child upkeep and so on and so forth? Yani those things are real. Uja mabwana alifanya thambi tukakosana bwana alipe watoto. Nasa ingine, Hana, Kwa hivyo ni kama kumunyonga, ni kama yule mtu alikuwa forgiven na meshika mwingine weka ndani, baka alipe. Should that person be forgiven? It's a question I'm asking. Should that person be forgiven? Maybe the answer is yes. But then some of you say, hata nikimsamehea, hata rudi hapa. I think that's okay. But forgive him, release him. Because the other one ya kurudi hiyo ni tuwachie hiyo mungu na eh, katharika. What about the convicted child molester who has paid his debt to society and now wants to work in the Sunday school department? Oh, parents. Never. My child, that person can go, cannot go close to my child. Uyu jama. Uyu muchama. May God help us. What about the murderer who the Rosemary and the husband went and preached to in committee and got saved and got released. Can't the family receive him? Rosemary atakawabia inakuwaka strago kurudisha madara. Hey, watu wao hamtaki, muke wake hamtaki, watoto wake hamtaki. It means a whole, na jamaa meokoka. Wanamuambia, kuokoka ni sawa ni yako, enderea tu. Kuokoka si ni yako, enderea uko. What about the Christian who becomes involved in an immoral relationship but has now repented? If the church leadership demands that she prove herself 
before being involved in misery. Isn't that demonstrating unforgiving spirit? And you want them to show what? I am forgiven. The Lord has forgiven me. The same dilemma lies behind each one of those scenarios. Does forgiveness automatically erase the consequences? Because that's where we are. The answer is no. Hata nikikusamehea consequences iko. Kama ulikuwa umetobolewa na musumari kwa mukono. Hata nikusamehea. Alama? Have I truly forgiven someone if at the same time I insist that they be held accountable for their actions? The answer to this dilemma is found in an important distinction between two words. The first word is vigilance. Vigilance. Vigilance is my desire to see another person suffer for the pain he has caused me. But the Bible constantly warns against harboring this kind of feeling in my heart because he says, vigilance belongs to God. It's mine, declares the Lord. Romans 12, 19. Dear friends, don't try to get even. Let God take revenge. In the scripture, the Lord says, I am the one to take revenge and pay back. The other word is justice. You remember that person is saying, Baka alipe. That's justice. Justice is the payment God or society might demand from someone because of a wrong they have committed against us or against society as a whole. While we are to avoid vengeance, the Bible teaches us to seek justice for those who have been wronged. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 17, learn, learn to do good, seek justice, help the oppressed, defend the orphan, fight for the rights of widows. So if you write vengeance on one side and justice on the other, in your notes if you're writing. And then we say this, our personal desire for retribution against our offender, that is vigilance. But justice is repayment another person demands from our off offense or from our offender. Vigilance, striving to settle the debt ourselves, that is vigilance. But justice is allowing someone else to settle the score. Vigilance leads to bitterness. Justice leads to healing. Because it is just justice. Nikulipa tu na umelipa na umesamehewa. God says, I am to surrender my desire for vigilance, but I can never surrender society's responsibility to seek justice. Yani kama kuna kitu umeiba, society inaweza itisha urudishe. Lakini kwa kusamehea, kwa justice, hiyo inaleta uponyo. Hiyo inaleta uponyo. A few things that I'm going to say then I, I will ask the ministry team we pray for for some of you, or for all of us. God deals with us in the same way. When God forgives us, he removes the internal consequences of our sins. Eternal, hiyo. But not necessarily the temporal consequences, hiyo, tunayenda nayo, of our actions. Why would be a forgiving God, or a forgiving person, still allow someone to suffer such consequences? Be because, le le let's say it, kama umekatwa mkono ukiiba hata ukisamewa mkono hautarudi utakaa hivyo hivyo na mkono wale tuko na alama kwa miguu kwa sababu tulikuwa tunaiba vitu za watu tunaingilia kwa sengenge zinatukwaruza na kadhalika uliokoka ndio lakini chukua mfuto wako juu tuone kona kukwaruswa huko kwa sababu kuna vitu za wenyewe ulibeba Wengine fungua mdomo, ulilimwa ngumi meno ikatoka. Consequence. Lakini umesamehewa, unaenda binguni. We ni mtu wa mungu kabisa, lakini ngumi ulilimwa. Number one. Consequence promotes order in society. What would our world be like if there were no laws, no penalties, no red lights? It would be chaos. Hey, I tell you, when, when it rains and the police are not there, you know what happens. Oh my goodness. Sikida mutu, anataka kwenda nyubani. Sizi wenyewe tunajifungiaga. Kwa saa kida mutu anataka kwenda wapi? Udu anatoka pande, anafuga pande. Udu anatoka, anafuga pande. Na hui anamfugia hapa. Alafu askari ya kiwa mekate pande, anaangalia. You know, one time, Niliingia basi basi za zamani zilikuwa nzuri sana. Toka town kwenda banana ilikuwa inachukua lisana nusu. 
<laughs> Naona wengine wakisema hai hai ilikuwa ile chukua 1 and a half hours. Kwanza kupanda kamulima ka kutoka hapa harakani na teremka ipande tu mudhaiga. Alafu ikishamaliza inasimama hapo juu. Wana pretend ni watu wanaita, ni maji inawekwa. Ikifika KTTC inasimama. Hasi watu inagoja. Sasa moja ilitubeba. <laughs> Kika kifika KTTC tulikuwa mimi na ndugu mwingine tunaenda kuhubiri banana mimi nilikuwa nimebeba gita tulikuwa tumebeba gita niseme tulikuwa tumebeba gita tulipofika hapo inji nikaanza kuungua nilikuwa nafikiria kiti ya kama saba hivi ukitoka kwa mlango nilikuwa karibu mwisho ndugu tulikuwa naye akaniwacha akaenda mbio <laughs> wakakutana na mwingine pale kwa mlango mabega yao ikashikana wote wanajaribu kwenda hakuna anapatia mwingine nafasi mimi nikakuja na gita nikaingilia hapa kwao vizuri nikaenda pale chini nikawastua he wakarudi ndani ile mmoja aingie tu you know sometimes it's so amazing it's so amazing consequences <laughs> of not releasing one another mnakaa pale wangechomeke pale kama si kutoka ni wasitue warudi ili watoke mmoja mmoja wangeumia pale wale wazuri ni wale walikuwa wamerukia kwa dirisha lakini my friend and another one wamekwama pale so unawapita na guitar alafu namuuliza ndugu liniwacha na guitar eh bwana lazima uwe mtu sharp tumia akili yako vizuri god have mercy Genesis 9 verse 6 Whoever sheds man's blood by man his blood shall be shed for in the image of God he made man those were the judgment that were there by then two consequences serve as a deterrent to others you know unless there is something awful wrong with you it should not happen again if it happened once please don't allow it to happen again of course I know how would I know but fear of consequences is perhaps the most powerful incentive of obedience because if I know that I can be caught I this morning when I came to church around was it 7 or 6 something mine came to the office and I told him tu tengeneze hii kitu kuna kitu kwa ofisi yangu akatengeneza shida kumbe ilikuwa ni switch tu unajua sisi watu hana rogo tuko na shida sana unaweza kuwa na na remote wewe mwenyewe unanijinyonga nataka mtu akuja kukuokoa <laughs> aliponiokoa nikasikia news kwamba sasa ukiiba watafreeze account yako wakisha freeze account yako ukifungwa watauza mali yako yote warikave now the argument is wakisema hivyo watu hawataiba but i concluded watu wataiba kile watafanya sasa ni wizi utapanda bei but it's a very good idea lakini mtu akijua pesa nikiweka kwa account yangu mtakuja ku freeze nitaiweka in actual fact mapolisi wale watafanywa interview next year hakuna hata mmoja atakuwa na pesa kwa simu unajua mnaangalia kwa safari park safari com unakuta vile alitumiwa ma 50 ma 50 ma 50 ma 50 sasa hautakuta wamejua account kuja za pesa wamejua utaulizwa hii milioni ulitoa kwa hivyo wizi sasa sio huo hata kuna mwingine aliniambia unapeleka mahali pengine kuna mmoja alikuwa sharp sana. Yeye wizi wake alikuwa alikuwa na nyumba anajenga. Ofisa. Sasa alikuwa tu akisema mchanga mawe <laughs> kokoto. <laughs> Yeye alikushika ndani huko hapana stack. Ah, mimi sichukuagi pesa. Mimi si mawe <laughs>
So consequences serve as, as a deterrent to others. Fear of the consequences is an incentive for obedience. The third one is consequence prevents us from further disobedience. When we know what is going to happen, it should. And then finally, forgiveness and reconciliation. If you genuinely forgive someone, you should rebuild your relations with that, with that person. What if someone is hesitant to offer forgiveness to their offender because they have no desire to reestablish the relationship? No, no, sasa. Mimi sitaki tu uhusiano urudi wetu. Kwa hivyo sitaki kumsamea. Na nikimsamea alafu uhusiano je? Yaani kuna those kind of fear. The Bible teaches us that reconciliation is important for at least two reasons. First, unity among believers testifies to the world of God's power. Secondly, unity among believers empowers us to resist the attacks of Satan who wants to divide, isolate, and conquer us individually. There is a spiritual strength in numbers. 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 Bless the name of the Lord. If again you are working on... Um, on, on, on notes, if you wrote forgiveness and reconciliation, I'll give you a few things that you can add there. But forgiveness depends upon me. Reconciliation depends upon us. Did you hear that? Forgiveness depends upon me. I'm the one to forgive you. But when we are talking about reconciliation, it will take two of us. We need to understand that. The book of Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, can two walk together unless they are agreed? Then the answer, of course, is no. They can't. They have to agree. Reconciliation usually involves three ingredients. The first one is repentance. Admitting that we are responsible for the wrong that has been done to another person. Reinstitution. Offering some type of compensation to the person who have wronged for the loss they have suffered. And finally, rehabilitation. Demonstrating a change in our behavior over a period of time towards the person we have wronged. So reconciliation, my brother, it does not happen instantaneously. It doesn't. It's a process. That's why offenders are wrong to demand immediate restoration. It cannot happen. No wonder Rosemary and Dan will take a, a guy that was a murderer, saved, they take them home, and the wife looks at the guy, he says, I have forgiven him. Lakini musimuache, murudinai. Munaanza process. Because the rehabilitation, haichukwagi namba moja, ati unarudi tu. It's like, nikama, nikama, nikama buwana, hamewacha mkewake. Mukawaki amesomesha watoto, wameenda universities and kuolewa anaolewa. Anakuja kama nothing has happened. Eh, Nini hithe wa mwana? Saa gapi. Ni saa mbili ya mani saa sita. Unless uitwe. We ndugu kama unanisikiza. Unless uitwe. Na huyo mama aseme, baba yake bado yuko hai, tunaweza muita. Usidhubutu. Kaa kando. It doesn't happen. I have forgiven you. I want you to jump over me. You know, you people that are married, your spouse has, for, you, you have forgiven her. But are you sure you can jump over one another immediately? No, it takes time. <laughs> it takes what? But there are some guys who want it immediately. Umenisame. Bas. Amna, enda pole pole bwana. Mwalimu, ukaka haora. Forgiveness, if you wrote forgiveness on one side, reconciliation on the other, forgiveness will be something like this. It takes one person to forgive. Reconciliation, it takes two to be reunited. Sawa, sawa. Forgive, forgiving happens inside the wounded person. Reconciliation, reunion happens in a relationship between two people. Forgiveness. We can forgive a person who never says he is sorry. What? But we cannot be truly reunited unless he is honestly sorry. Reconciliation is to come down. Lakini he na kusamehe na ujasema sorry. 
Kwa sababu mimi nataka kupona. Forgiveness, we can forgive even if we do not trust the person who wronged us once once will not wrong us again. We can forgive. But reconciliation reunion can happen only if we can trust the person who wronged us once not to wrong us again. So ndio nasema naweza kukusamehea lakini urafiki ule wetu na wewe unachakuwa muda to build it where it was. Once trust has died to build it up we we'll need time. Forgiveness. Forgiving has no strings attached. Reconciliation or reunion has several strings attached. Kama huyo mzee amerudi, amesema nenda choka. Watoto wangu wako wapi? Unamwambia kaa pale kwanza. Asante kwa kukuja, lakini saa hii terms zilibadilika. Katiba ilibadilika. Sasa lazima uingie in my terms. Unaingia namna gani? Ati unakuja tu. He, kai kare ate awe. You, you know and sometimes that's where people don't want you know because what people want to come and pretend nothing ever happened ah uh -uh. ukija unaambiwa kuna ka ugonjwa kana pimagwa uende upimwe twende tukapi kupana kuja umekuja bio bio hapa like nothing has ever happened tena nataka ulete ile pesa ripi yako nione uko namna gani kwa uzito so we have survived. <laughs> Finally forgiving and forgetting. This one I wanted to say. Hey, because this this <laughs> where karibu nisahau, karibu nimalizie pale. Forgiveness and forgetting. If you have really forgiven someone, you should be able to forget what they have done to you. And this is where I'm saying, please, it is not possible. That's why I thought it is good for me to get to this point. Ati unisame usahau. Hata mungu wa sahawagi. Anawakumbusha wana wa Israeli. Vile murivi ofanya mioyenu ikawa migumu. Wakati kure sijui mara na wati na wati anawakumbusha. Ni kwa sababu gani? Sio kwa sababu anataka kwa adhibu. Ni kwa kumbusha. Kwa hivyo kule kusahau. Mwambie jirani yako hausahawagi. Lakini unachagua kusaha. Kama Mungu because you see when when ya 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 ya. He? Na hii mambo si ni mingi. Forgetting is not a test of genuine forgiveness. Attempting to force oneself to forget a heart simply results in bitterness or guilt. Because we continue to remember in spite of ourselves having forgiven. Someone may struggle on either side of the forgetting issue. If God has really forgiven me, why do I keep on remembering my sin? Maybe I haven't genuinely repented. But you know what? Kama umefanya dhambi, shetani lazima atukubushage. Hata iendagi mbali, ikutu. I am saved today not because I have forgotten the sins that I did but because I remember the consequences of the sins that I did then I want to remain saved and in the kingdom of God. But doesn't God forget our sins? And isn't he forgiven his forgiveness of us a model for our forgiveness for him? Now listen. Jeremiah 31 verse 34, which is the one we quote. For I will forgive their iniquity and I will remember their sins no more. But listen, there is a Hebrew word called saga, which is remember. In this verse, or this verse, has the significance of causing us, this verse has the significance of causing us to remember. Mentioning, that word has that connotation, recalling, Saka has that word, reminding, it has that word, recording, it has that word. It is not that God cannot remember, but God chooses not to remember. 
Mwangalie jirani yako, hakubuki dhambi zako. Hata shetani akimwambia hakubuki dhambi zako. That's the goodness of God. Hakumbuki dhambi zangu. Hata akikumbushwa na shetani hakumbuki. Ah, I like that. Second Corinthians 5:10 tells us that Christians will have their deeds both good and bad evaluated at the judgment seat. Inamaanisha nini? Mungu anaziweka good end. Ni pale tu hatukui bad. Unapokuwa good inafunika the bad one. Lakini report yote ni Mungu anakuaga nayo. Hallelujah. But you are not God. Your memory fails you often, sometimes by forgetting things you want to remember, and sometimes remembering things you want to forget. Have you ever found yourself in that conflict? Kuna vitu unataka kukumbuka ukumbuki. Na umekaa hivi. Vile unakumbuka ni zile zote utaki. Na kwanza zile zote mbaya. I don't know why. Yani nimekaa nafikiria. I want to think positive. Yo, today I'm going to think positive. Nitakaa karibu na kiti. Nitakaa karibu nisikize na karamu nikiandika. Alafu unaandika moja ya pili unakuta. Vile ulitaka kukumbuka, kukumbuki. Unakumbuka kadhambi kengine huko karate ka kulinu 19 ronga go. Sasa unashindwa na kaka yako yumako. Hii imetoka upande gani? Saa hii nilikuwa hivi na hii imenitokezea upande gani? It's part of this. Ni kwa sababu katika maisha yetu lazima tukumbuke. Listen, listen to this. Forgetting is a function of the brain. Brain ndio ina sawaga. But forgiving is a function of the spirit. It is the spirit within me that I want to release to forgive others. Our brain is capable, listen, of storing at least 600 memories a second. When I saw that I said no wonder drivers na labda ma driver amjuagi driver akienda mahali Sijui Rafael ukienda mahali tututoke hapa tu twende mwingi huko ndani tuingie anywhere Alafu uachwe na wanyewe walale unarudi Nairobi Hiyo ni kwa sababu wewe katika maumbile Mungu amekuumba kuna memories unaweka na tumiti twingine na labda hata akili yako haiko active lakini you can't get lost I don't know whether you are getting the picture you can't get lost why because there is a lot of memories within you 600 yani you can ah god help us and have mercy upon us 600 memories a second yani alafu unanyamaza Alafu kika unasema Yeah there was pastor had a red tie Yeah Sasa hii wewe ukipotea tuweke picha yako hapa Utasikia watu wakisema nguo walikuwa na nazo mwisho Anapendaga red <laughs> Na anakaaga mkono wa kushoto because we record those I also record where you stay but some of you mmeanza kunichanganya sasa kwa sababu nimeona mmeanza kuchange change sana very fast <laughs> but anyway i will also memory itainuka niweze kujua umeketi upande gani if you live 75 years and i want to live more than that you will have 1.5 trillion informations computer itakuwa in a trillion wacha wacha hii hii trillion thus any time we encourage someone to forget an event we ask them to do something really impossible in fact struggling to forget a past event can also be very dangerous for us it cause it can have an opposite effect so in other words brother hata kama nimechuzi kusahau usinikumbushe kwa sababu nitakumbuka nimechuzi kusahau na sasa ambao sisi ambao tumeoana tuchague kusaha kusahau hey, forgive and kusahau chagua kusahau sisemi utasahau nikuchagua sikumbuki hii 
Na shetani anaweza ileta sasa sikumbuki 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 kwa sababu anataka tu ukasirike uanze kuwa na shida ya tumbo na mambo kadhalika. Unajua mahubiri haishaki. I would not forgive. Father in the mighty name of Jesus. You are our great God. And dear Father, we have come to know you whom to know is life eternal. We are talking about forgiveness and the healing that comes into our physical bodies when we learn to forgive. I want to ask all of us to stand if you can. I had promised you that the ministry team will come here, but I have decided you will be the ministry team yourself. Let's all stand and turn to someone. Just turn to someone. Turn to someone, hold their hands and just whisper a prayer to the Lord. And pray to the Lord that they will be filled with forgiveness. They will learn to forgive. They will not demand somebody first of all to have repented and turned around to be remorseful. But just pray. Pray that God will give them a spirit to forgive. And if they are carrying any weight right now, oh may they forgive. May they they, I know they are the offended, they are the victim. But no wonder the biggest responsibility is on the victim. Pray that they will. In the name of Jesus. Get the grace to forgive and to pardon. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh blessed King of kings. And Lord of lords. Yes, I choose to forgive. Yes, there are reasons that I cannot. There are reasons that I should not. There are reasons that I would not, but I choose, O oh God, to forgive. And I choose also what to remember and what not. Lord God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, that my life, O oh God, will never ever be the same again. Because I will learn to forgive myself, forgive my spouse, forgive my children, forgive my brothers, forgive my sister, forgive my parents. And forgive pastors, forgive members of the church and my prayer group and cell. I will forgive. I choose to forgive. I choose to forgive. I choose to forgive. I choose to forgive. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may get seated. While praying, while praying, the Lord deposited an illustration that I want to finish with. Because some of us, we beat ourselves. Why am I remembering? Why can't I forgive? A lady called Corey Ten Boom, uh, the hiding place. She was put into a camp, consecration camp in uh, Germany. And what was done to her, she could not forget. She carried it with her. Then one day, she goes to a pastor to tell the pastor, why am I not forgetting? And then she was told, have you ever gone to a bell? You see, for us that are a little bit older, churches had a bell. A tower up and a bell that if you are blessed, you could be told to go and ring it. You pull, like there in Thika St. Patrick Catholic Church. You go pull. And then it'll go boom, 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 boom. What happens when you stop? The bell there does not stop because it is not electrical. It goes beating boom, 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 boom. Until the sound goes off. Even for you. What you remember today. Is like that bell. It will go away. But not now. It is no longer being pulled. It's going boom boom. Boom boom. boom, boom. Receive it. Let's give a clap to our bishop.